You know, <clears throat> I've heard people say that too much of anything is no good for you. We've already got the ratio test, the root test, the alternating series test, the absolute conversion test, the interval test, the divergence test. Could it be that too much of anything is no good for you? Or could it be that we need yet another I've test to see when a series converges or when a series diverges? I don't know about that. There's been a time that we've loved and we've shared love and we have. This will get you in the mood for serious. Alright, it's never too much of anything. We could have one more test. This test is called the Cauchy condensation test, and it's probably, it'll turn out to be one of your favorite ones, I think. Once you see the power in it, I like it. I think it's one of my favorite ones. So let's get on with it. And in the, and in the uh, at the same time while doing the condensation test, we'll re-explore, revisit the harmonic series. It's one of the famous ones that we know diverges by the interval test. So let's take a look at that. It starts off with this series, the harmonic series. We know by the integral test, for example, it, it diverges. Um, we can write it out. It looks more or less like that. But here's where the magic starts. Suppose that instead of writing it that way, you write it in a different way. You write just the 1, and then you write another line with the next two terms, the 2 and the 3. You write them right below. And then you write the next terms, uh, a few of them right below. And so on and so forth. The idea here is to cut it up into terms that are powers of 2 and start off with these guys right here they're all powers of 2 and then watch the following operation this guy is obviously uh, whatever it's just one this one is obviously less than or equal to one half plus one half why would that be well the one half is the same as one half the only question is is one third smaller than one half and because the bottom is bigger yes it is so one half plus one third would be smaller than one half plus one half but that would mean that we can rewrite it as two times one one half. So this guy's smaller than two times a half. This one over here, we've got four of them, four items. And this is smaller than that, that's smaller than that, that's smaller than one fourth. They're all smaller than or equal to one fourth. So th this would have to be smaller than or equal to two square times one over two square. That's four of them, four items, and they're all smaller than the first one, one fourth, because they're, they're descending. That part right there is a key idea. They're all smaller than the next one. Or the next one is always smaller than the previous one. That's called descending. Next one, um, we we do not, here we did two items, here we did four, the next one we do eight. They start off with one eighth. Of course, they're getting smaller and smaller, so they're all smaller than the first one. And I've got eight of them, so I've got two to the third, and they're all smaller than two to the third. That gives you this sort of relationship. And you can comfortably say that this entire series will be smaller than or equal to. Uh, it will be smaller than or equal to. Oh, by the way, you can also do this. Uh, well, I might as well do this one. I can see the pattern now. This would have been smaller than or equal to 2 to the 0 times 1 over 2 to the 0. So it follows the exact, exact same pattern here. Uh, this is smaller than uh, 2 to the 0 times 1 over 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1 times 1 over 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2 times 1 over 2 to the 2 etc etc you could say that this entire series is less than or equal to I'll summarize it right here on top so we can keep this uh, I'll do it in green no yellow so this is smaller than or equal to the sum of uh, 2 to the n times 1 over 2 to the n as n runs from 0 to infinity all right, that was neat, right? We took the harmonic series, the famous one, we rewrote it in its shape, made some cute observations, and we got that. But wait, there's more. Watch what happens then. Um, we turned the page over, and turned the page over, and what happened? Everything disappeared. Oh no. Uh, all right, so we got our series here. Um, move it up a little bit. And now we write it again in this triangle formation, but we like write it slightly different than before. Um, before we had one, two, four, whatever. This time we put the one over 
in the first spot and we do that because of what we're really trying to do is now we want the powers of 2 on the right hand side you see this is a power of 2, power of 2, power of 2 and everything else is uh, bigger because the denominators are smaller so you can say that this guy is smaller than or equal to 2 uh, one fourths or is smaller than or equal to um, well, we'll come back to the pattern in just a second. These are all smaller than an eighth, so I could say I've got four, and I've, they're all, these are all bigger than the smallest one, which is one eighth, four times, and so on and so forth. These are all smaller than one sixteenth, these are all bigger than or equal to one sixteenth, and I've got eight of them. Um, so I could, once I see this sort of pattern, I can maybe make a, a suggestion here, maybe we could rewrite it using a more, uh, more sophisticated notation here would do 2 to the third times 1 over 2 to the fourth. Yeah? This one is equal to 2 squared times 1 over 2 to the third. I'm trying to understand this pattern here with the twos. This always has seems to have one smaller than that one. So if this is 2 to the second, I've got 2 to the one of them. And that helps me establish the pattern for the first one. It's 2 to the zero times 1 over 2 to the one. Um, that tells you that maybe somebody maybe we could establish this pattern here uh, we call this guy it's always bigger than or equal to um, the sum of 2 to the n minus 1 over 1 over 2 to the n I'm getting to the good part buddy I can't pause it right now and that right there is amazing it's amazing because it's going to give you some very very powerful ideas just wait one second let's see what this little buddy wants so where does that get us that gets us to this very very important place here where we've got the harmonic series the famous one bounded on the right hand side by this creature right here and on the left hand side by this creature that almost looks like that creature except for the minus one now let's see if we can get the most out of that idea possible let's turn the page and see what that turns into um, Let's turn the page and see what that turns into. All right, so we've got the harmonic series bonded by this, uh, which is uh, bonded by that, not written, nicely written. Uh, it might be tempting to simplify this. After all, if you have 2 to the n times 1 over 2 to the n, these guys would cancel. This would cancel with that, and that would cancel with that, and uh, this would also almost cancel too, except for 1 half maybe end of them would cancel then you'd get uh, something like uh, one half so you could simplify it might be tempting to simplify and say you know what that's equal to that and that does some nice things for you it tells you that the harmonic series is squeezed between this one and that one but of course that one is ridiculously divergent because you're adding one half plus one half plus one half plus one half infinite many times so that's clearly going to be infinity and this one's even larger so it must be infinite. It may be tempting to do it that way, but it's not the most powerful thing to do. Instead of simplifying this, every time you simplify, you hide patterns. If you don't want to be a pattern hider, go ahead and simplify. But if you don't want to be a pattern hider, think about the alternative idea. The alternative idea might be to instead look at it as in more general terms. We had this function here, a n, and we grouped them in groups of a two n two n of them. And on the right hand side we were able to bond it by this, on the left hand side we were able to bond it by this. You see the n minus 1 was here but I took out a 1 half leaving just 2 to the n. But that does something amazingly important for us. Think about it. Look at that series. Suppose, hypothetically, it wasn't this series. Just Let's abandon this specific example. We're done with that. But we got something like this out of it. Now suppose that, suppose, what if, let me get a little color in here. You guys want to go green? Alright, suppose that this one was finite. What if this one was finite? Well this one's even less than it, less than or equal. That would force this one to converge. So whenever this one converges, that one must also converge. But what if on the other hand, the same sequence, the same series, that's exactly the same one except it's got a one half. The th same sequence was infinite. What if, what if what if this was infinite? 
If this is infinite, this one's even bigger. So it would have to be infinite. That type of analysis, this has the same sort of flavor as a direct comparison approach. But it leads to some interesting ideas. It says that if this, if this one is finite, so is that one. But if it's infinite, so is that one. This forces you to the following corner. It says that under these conditions, whenever an is positive and decreasing, all throughout we needed the an to be monotone and decreasing, an behaves very, very much like 2 to the n, a 2 to the n. That, my friends, that's the punchline right there. That another way to see what an does is to look at the condensed version, the groups of two n of them, in this way. And whatever this one does, that one will do based on this trapping of it on either side by variations of the condensed version of the sequence. It's brilliant. Amazing. All right, here we go. Generalized. The generalized idea of the Cauchy condensation theorem. You got any generic formula, some formula for your ANs, for your sequence. Expand it. It looks more or less like that. At least the beginning does. And we rearrange it. Uh, same as we did the other ones. And we start playing our game here um, for the rearrangement. In this rearrangement, of course, this one they're all descending, they're getting smaller, so this one is less than or equal to 2 times the biggest one in this row, which would be A2. They're getting smaller, that's the hypothesis, they're all decreasing, so this one's smaller than or equal to um, 2 square times A2 square of them. The first one, which is A2 square, is bigger than all these other ones, so if I get four of these, four A4s, A4, 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 that's what A, this means, four of them, that would be a larger quantity than these guys. Um, let's do that in a neater way. So this is less than or equal to 2 squared times a times, or a of 2 to the n, 2 to the second. Same thing here, we've got 8 of them, and these are all getting smaller. The hypothesis is that your sequence is decreasing, so the big one, first one is the biggest one. So the entire sum cannot be worse than 2 to the third which is the number of items that I've got from 8 to 15, there's 16 of them. Uh, and each one is no worse than a 2 to the third than the first item. That bounds it on the, on the right hand side by, by uh, summation of 2 to the n, a 2 to the n. This is a generic case. Oh, of course, the first one I forgot. 2 to the 0 times a 2 to the 0. It matches the pattern. Uh, the, set, the other one doesn't match the pattern that well on the one we bonded on the left hand side. We group it this way um, because what we want is we want the twos on the right hand side. Um, that way we can say well this one is smaller or this one is bigger than uh, the A4 is the smallest one here in this row because they're all decreasing so the last one is the smallest one. So if I have two times A2 square that quantity would be smaller than this one Similar thing here, we have 2 square a 2 to the third. Uh, we have 2 to the 0 times a 2. And this one's just all by itself here. That doesn't quite match the pattern for the generic case. Uh, so altogether, we bond it on the, on the right hand side by a 1 plus uh, summation of 2 to the n minus 1 a of 2 to the n. Uh, as n runs from 0 to infinity. Okay, and we had already bonded on the right hand side. That leads you to some some um, inequality like this one, which is exactly, exactly the punchline. This is so beautiful because it traps this one in less than that quant that series, but bigger than half of that one plus some constant. So whatever this one does, Suppose that one converges, that means it's finite, right? So this guy's finite, and this one's even smaller, and they're all positive terms. That's another one of the conditions. So this one must be finite, because a partial sum sequence must be bounded and monotone. So of course it converges. So when this converges, it's finite, this one's even smaller, it's more finite, forces that to converge. On the other hand, if this one diverges, that means this is infinite, times a half is still infinite, plus a1, that's still infinite, and this one's even larger, forcing it to diverge as well, which leads you to the profound and deep insight that your sequence AN, whenever it's monotone and positive, will behave the same as a condensed version, 2N, A2 to the N. So brilliant. Give it up for Cauchy. 
All right, we'll come back with some amazing examples. You'll see the power of Koshi. Peace.